Hi, I'm Jonathan Wild, and we cover how to record and post journal entries. There are three simple rules to journal entries that you need to remember, and I'm going to show you how they work. Rule number one, every journal entry needs at least two accounts. You can't just write one account and call it a day. You need to show what accounts are affected by the transaction. For example, let's say you provide training services for a customer and they pay you $500 cash. What are the two accounts involved here? Cash and services revenue. Rule number two, every journal entry needs at least one debit and one credit. You need to show which accounts are increasing or decreasing by using debits and credits. In our example, the debit is to increase cash, an asset account. The credit is to increase services revenue. Now in the journal entry, the debits are listed first on the left-hand side, and credits are listed next and indented to the right. Remember, debit means left, and credit means right. Debit left, credit right. Debit left, credit right. And just keep saying that. Rule number three, total debits must always equal total credits in every journal entry, always. This helps make sure that your accounting equation stays balanced. Now in our example, the debit amount to cash is 500, and the credit amount to services revenue is 500. Okay, so I think we're ready for some more examples. So let's assume a fitness training business is just starting and the owner invests 60,000 cash in exchange for common stock. To record this entry, we debit and increase cash for 60,000 and credit and increase common stock for 60,000. We also see that after recording the entry, we post the entry to the ledger accounts. Next, the business purchases $10,000 of fitness supplies on credit. This means that the supplies are received right now, but we will pay for them later. To record this entry, we debit supplies for 10,000 and credit accounts payable for 10,000. We debit supplies because debits increase assets. We credit accounts payable because credits increase liabilities. The 10,000 being posted to accounts payable reminds us that we have to pay the supplier in the future. Next, the business purchases fitness training equipment for $24,000 cash. We debit and increase equipment for $24,000 and credit and decrease cash for $24,000. This is essentially an exchange of one asset for another. Posting the $24,000 to the ledger accounts, we see that the credit reduces our balance in the cash account. Next, the company provides training services to a customer and bills them for $27,000. Because we did not receive cash right after providing the services, this creates an accounts receivable, meaning the customer owes us money. To record the entry, we debit accounts receivable for $27,000 and credit services revenue for $27,000. We debit accounts receivable because debits increase asset accounts. We credit services revenue because credits increase revenue accounts. The $27,000 is posted to accounts receivable to remind us that the customer owes us money in the future. A couple weeks later, when the customer pays us for the $27,000 worth of training services, we record a debit to cash for $27,000 and a credit to accounts receivable for $27,000. The debit to cash increases that asset account and the credit to accounts receivable decreases that asset account. The payment by the customer does not change the total amount of assets and does not affect liabilities or equity. 
It converts one asset, the receivable, to another asset, cash. Also, we already recorded the revenue when we earned it. So receiving the cash does not create any additional revenue. Next, we pay our employees who have now earned $9,000 of wages. To record this entry, we debit wages expense for $9,000 and credit cash for $9,000. We debit wages expense because debits increase expense accounts. We credit cash because credits decrease asset accounts. The $9,000 is then posted to the ledger accounts. See that the credit reduces the balance in the cash account. Next, we make a partial payment of $3,000 cash for the supplies we purchased earlier on credit. If you remember, we initially recorded an accounts payable for the transaction. When making the partial payment, we debit accounts payable for $3,000 and credit cash for $3,000. This payment does not create an expense, even though cash flows out of the business. Instead, the expense will be recorded when we actually use the supplies. Next, we pay our current month's December rent for the fitness center of $6,000. To record this, we debit rent expense for $6,000 and credit cash for $6,000. The cost of this month end rent is an expense because it helped us earn revenue this month. Next, we distribute a $1,000 cash dividend. To record this, we debit dividends for $1,000 and credit cash for $1,000. The debit to dividends decreases total equity and the credit to cash decreases total assets. Next. The company receives $20,000 cash in advance from a customer. In return, the company agrees to provide fitness training services to the customer over the next few months. To record this entry, we debit cash for $20,000 and credit unearned services revenue for $20,000. We debit cash to recognize the increase in that asset and we credit and increase unearned services revenue to recognize the obligation we have to provide those services. We do not get to recognize any revenue until we actually provide those training services. Next, the company purchases a six month insurance policy by prepaying $3,000 cash. To record this transaction, we debit prepaid insurance for $3,000 and credit cash for $3,000. We debit prepaid insurance to increase that prepaid asset. This payment does not create an expense, even though cash flows out of the business. Instead, insurance expense will be recorded as the insurance coverage expires over time. So that wraps up our example. Now, before I let you go, Remember our three rules when recording journal entries. First is that when recording an entry, there must be at least two accounts involved. Second, there must always be at least one debit and at least one credit. Third, that total debits must always, always equal total credits.